So, we have uh, seen in the earlier lecture about the direction of and the magnitude of the littoral drift. Although we say that uh, the average littoral drift along the east coast is approximately 1 million meter cube per year, there is a considerable variation. It varies somewhere as low as 0 0.7, 0 0.8 to about 1.2 million meter cube per year. This, this has been estimated by several agencies within our country. And uh, there is some kind of uh, refinements to this quantity which is uh, in progress uh, through direct measurements. But how are these uh, uh, sediment transport uh, both the direction and uh, this one is uh, uh, the quantity is estimated. It is either uh, estimated mostly using empirical relationships as well as through direct measurements. Unfortunately, we do not have much of uh, direct measurements going on along the Indian coast. So, we rely mostly on empirical relationships. There are a number of empirical relationships uh, which have been uh, widely used and are being widely used. So, that is on the aspect of estimation of littoral drift both its direction and see the direction actually depends on the direction of wave. Direction of wave which is uh, going to control the longshore sediment, uh, longshore currents. Longshore currents are the driving force for sediment transport right. So, when you have the shoreline, so if the waves are coming in this direction, when the waves break and that is what is going to set your longshore current. So, it basically depends on the angle at which the wave is going to break. If it is going to break in this uh, fashion, so naturally your longshore currents will be in towards this direction. Suppose if uh, you have the angle in this direction, then you would have the current in this direction. Okay. So, the, one, uh, this clearly implies that Along the east coast, since you have two monsoons, that is northeast and southwest monsoon, the direction of the littoral drift is mainly governed by this, which is again governed by the monsoons. Is that clear? So, suppose if you have only this kind of a normal breaking, I mean, uh, waves uh, attacking the coast. Uh, are propagating along the uh, towards the coast uh, normal to the shore. Then what will happen? In this case there will not be much of longshore currents. So, there will not be much of movement of the sediment in this along the shore. Instead there will be because the wave is going to come over the beach and then return. So, it will bring some amount of sand and probably it might retain some of the sand along the coast or it might take back. It depends on the current onshore and the magnitude of the current onshore and the offshore. If the offshore current is more, then it is going to drag away all the sand. So, that is why when you are planning for a, a, a grind field, what would happen in a place where you are having a, a longshore currents, in a location where the longshore currents are dominated, then you have the grinds, then this longshore will deposit all the sand. Suppose if you do the same thing in a location where you have onshore offshore flow, what will happen? This is very simple, no? The sand will not be depositing here. So no coast will be always exposed to this, to this kind of current. There will always be some amount of angle, oblique wave of attack. So, because of this what we might happen is some amount of sand might get deposited at certain locations. When there is small 
magnitude of uh, your uh, uh, for lesser currents you know in the longshore current uh, longshore direction. So, that will probably uh, deposit some small amount of sand, but unfortunately this will be again removed when uh, it is dominated by onshore offshore transport. So, that is one of the reason why people started thinking of offshore detached breakwater and also the T grinds. What will happen? This is going to allow the deposition of the sand and these horizontal members are going to retain to some extent the sand which is likely to move back to the ocean. So, now how much can be retained in spite uh, even uh, uh, if you have the onshore offshore uh, uh, mode of uh, flow depends on the gap between this as well as the width of this. If it is too lesser you might land up in problems related to rip currents. So, although the structures all the structures look quite simple it needs a lot of investigation before you get on to the field for implementation. For that a careful understanding of the complete physics is very essential which was uh, being carried out mostly using physical models in the earlier days early 70s or even early 80s the results for coastal protection for that matter even the harbor problems that is tranquility inside harbors etcetera it all relied on physical modeling. And later due because of the rapid progress in the development of computing facilities numerical model came into existence. Why numerical model? Why physical model? There can be a, a debate. There are certain things that certain advantages with physical model. What you can achieve in physical model sometimes is difficult to achieve in numerical model. There are certain kind of facilities available in the numerical model, which is not possible or not possible, I would not say possible, would be, which would be quite cumbersome in the case of physical model. You understood? For example, uh, you want to test a harbor breakwater. So, a coast is there and you have the wave direction. So, you want to check the alignment of the breakwaters whether it has to be like this or whether it has to be like this. So, different configurations are there which we will be seeing when we talk about uh, breakwaters. So, if I want to test a number of uh, layouts and finally, come out with a kind of an optimum layout then which is better numerical modeling is better because once your numerical model is proved validated then it is very easy I can change the way I want I can have a, a breakwater like this whatever it is and I can play around and it is not going to be cumbersome at all. Please remember when I am talking about this we are talking only about the tranquility. When we are talking about tranquility the seabed is considered to be impermeable. that is quite straightforward to consider in a numerical model. 
okay. What is the kind of phenomena you have to consider here combined refraction, diffraction, okay. Combined refraction, diffraction as well as reflection from the breakwaters. But then what about the permeability of this breakwater? How will you handle in the case of numerical model? You consider an average coefficient and then try to do this, average permeability and try to investigate. So, you can to some extent incorporate all these things, but then this bed is a bit difficult. Suppose if I want to have a grind field, and I would like to check how the shoreline is going to oscillate, how the beach buildup is going to take place, then you can either resort to numerical model or physical model. But then if you are talking about the movement of sand, when you are talking about the physical model, we talk we should have what is call, called as mobile bed modeling. Which is not so easy to implement. What is meant by mobile bed modeling? You have to also scale down the movement of the sand, the characteristics of the sand apart from the wave characteristics. So, herein you will be using what is called as a distorted model, okay. you will be using the vertical scale and the horizontal scale will be different. Okay. Suppose and the other case is for physical model, if you want to test the stability of a breakwater or a sea wall. All of us know that the design of the weight of this individual armor stone is based on significant wave uh, that is a different issue, but this is based on it is an empirical coefficient. Okay. When you use this coefficient for example, you use a, a, a natural rock, it is very essential to check its stability through physical model. What do you do? You scale down the weight of the individual stone as well as the weight of the individual stones provided in the secondary layer as well as the core layer and then subject it to waves. You understand? So, which uh, I will try to cover about the physical model of uh, uh, stability of breakwaters in a later class, but this is uh, uh, this it is very difficult to do it using a numerical model. So, most of the major projects they are done using numerical model, but many of them also try to verify the numerical model using physical model. Physical model is expensive, quite laborious, but certainly it gives a lot of information provided the modeling is done properly. At the same time numerical model, it may sound very nice. Numerical model says okay, uh, uh, the graphics are sometimes fantastic, particularly the commercial available codes. What happens when you have the commercial codes? You have to give some input use the entire process as a black box and you get some output. So, sometimes what happens junk in you get junk out.
So if you do not know the physics of the problem you will still be presenting the results which is quite dangerous. So whether it is numerical model or physical model the first step is to understand the physical phenomena of any process in this case it is coastal process okay any doubts as we have seen try to recollect so there are two types of problems as far as coastal engineering problems are concerned one is due to nature this was the first slide which I projected then due to man made so then 3 is 1 plus 2 it can be due to both to illustrate this first let us look at the man made problem and I am considering problems I mean the case studies only along the Indian coast. In this lecture I am just uh, introducing you to the man made problem along the Chennai coast. All of you know Chennai coast the Indian map somewhere here is our Chennai formerly called as Madras. It was sometime as early as 1876 that was the first time when they started bringing in cargo mostly pertaining to getting the spices okay. So they had just a, a pier jetting into the ocean and that pier itself facilitated the shoreline advancement on the north of the pier because as I said the net drift along the east coast is towards north. So earlier class there was a question why we are not touching about west coast. First let us finish the east coast and then we will have some few case studies along the west coast. When, uh, when they realized the advancement of the shoreline and also due to the increase in the marine traffic they wanted to have a harbor basin. The harbor basin was created by having a pair of breakwaters with an eastern entrance as you can see this is the eastern entrance. The moment they constructed this pair of breakwaters the advancement of the shoreline was a continuous process. and then it started leading to a fear that they might have problems with the choking of the approach channel because approach channel naturally has to be somewhere here. So slow bypassing of the sediment will naturally occupy the approach channel. So that that led to so around the same time there was erosion here. This is a very classic uh, problem, you know. So you are putting uh, an obstruction in an environment which is dominated by the littoral drift moving from right to left. Okay, and this is northern direction here.
So naturally you will have the advancement of the shoreline and erosion on this side. That time the erosion was not a big problem, but the advancement of the shoreline was a huge problem. So what was done in 1920, there was an outer key constructed and this entrance was closed. In fact, in the port if you go that still remains the two pillars which was serving as the previous entrance for the harbor. So, this was closed because it was said that the sand will move like this, there may not be much problem, but any port for that matter most of the ports. After the capital dredging is done, the maintenance dredging has to be carried out. Only thing is the how periodical it has to be the maintenance dredging and how much would be the quantity of dredging, it depends on the environment of course, which is going to be governed by the quantity of sediment transport. So, when this was going, but still this was the problem of the shoreline advance was not being solved. So, this is the present problem, this is not to scale that this figure is just for illustration. What has happened here? The long side sediment transport is moving in this direction. So, now they extended the outer arm, I think it is of the order of about 1.7 kilometers or 2 kilometers nearly. And this is the inner harbor, this is the inner harbor, and this is called as the Jawahar dock, and this is the turning circle, all those things. So, this is actually the old harbor. They also had a, a sand screen. What is the sand screen? Sand screen is something like a littoral barrier which will arrest the movement of sand. But what has happened is, in spite of having this barrier, the sand was sand bypasses and still there is some problem with the approach channel, not, only, not just because of the movement of the sand from here, there is always the littoral drift taking place here, am I right? Okay. Movement of sand will always be there, either in form of a bed load or in the form of suspended load. The quantity which it is going to increase is somewhere near the within the surf zone only, but even beyond the surf zone towards the ocean, there is certain amount of sand which will be moving. And you see that all these areas, this is going to act as an obstruction. So, naturally there will be some amount of longshore currents here also. So, that is going to also bring in some amount of sand. So, leading to the deposition of the sand along the approach channel, which needs to be bridge. The problem, this problem is not only for Chennai port, it is also for the other ports like your Visakhapatnam port. Or the Paradi port along the east coast. So, the problem is see mostly the waves are approaching the coast in this direction. When you have the waves approaching in this direction, naturally the breakwater has to be like this. If you want to develop a harbor basin here. 
so tranquility conditions forces us forces us to have a breakwater alignment like this but at the same time unfortunately it gives rise to problems concerning the deposition or advancement of the shoreline on the south and on the northern side it has disadvantages due to erosion the advancement of the shoreline has both uh, the, no i mean uh, the problems related to it can have the beach formation on the south of the breakwater can have both advantages and disadvantages but on the northern side erosion is has to be a problem here so now you see that the present configuration looks something like this and uh, because of this interception by the littoral barriers that is these are the breakwaters which uh, the littoral, littoral barriers is nothing but the breakwaters you have a, a negative effect that is the coastal erosion directly pertaining to this problem of i mean this topic so what are the other what is the other negative uh, negative effect the negative effect is river kuam so you remember some of you getting down at the central railway station the first thing you see is the sinking of you get the pungent smell from uh, the river and uh, unfortunately this river moves all around the the mega city of chennai but uh, this river is becoming a eyesore not only because of uh, so many problems particularly it is becoming an health hazard also why a simple reason the sandbar is formed here closing the river mouth once the river mouth is closed what will happen where will the water go it will not go anywhere so it becomes a stagnant pool of water excellent for what excellent for breeding of mosquitoes excellent for pungent smell and don't you think it's going to be a health hazard certainly on the other side the positive this is because of the deposition of sand but we don't need the deposition of sand near the river mouth do we no but the plus point is again due to this is the plus point now the negative point due to sand deposition is this closing of river mouth but the positive aspect of deposition of sand is the formation of marina beach the marina beach is because of the littoral the advancement of the shoreline south of chennai harbor and it is claimed to be the second longest beach in the world next to miami beach the width of the beach gradually increased and it is something like 600 meters now 600 to 700 meters have you ever gone to marina beach all of you so you see the width of the beach right and you see the kind of people there particularly during this kind of summer season during summer season the marina beach is really flooded but you never knew that uh, this marina beach is because of this so what is the problem here so we don't we are happy with the marina beach but what is the problem here how do we solve this can anyone give some solution training wall training wall everyone can say that when you have a, an inlet like this 
which is being blocked by sand, you construct a pair of training wall. Is the solution correct? How many of you say that the solution is correct? Not correct? No? Okay, you please tell me. So, the harbor is somewhere here. So, you say the littoral drift is in this direction. So, you say that if uh, as suggested by what is your name? Chaitanya. Chaitanya. So, Chaitanya says he will put a pair of training wall, which I feel it is correct. What is your problem? Because of this, the sandbar is not allowed to be formed. Instead, I have a advancement of the beach. But his concern is this is going to erode. But anyway, this uh, breakwater is there, no? This is a harbor breakwater now. So, this is a harbor breakwater you see in the picture. This is the harbor breakwater, this is the river Kuam and in between he says that there will be erosion. Can this not be tackled? There are two things, okay, I agree that the pair of training walls is going to create a cre uh, erosion. So, do you mean to say that we should not construct uh, the training wall? Yes or no? Yes, but initially you objected, but when I said now uh, you are a bit submissive. Now you agree. So, there is no problem, I can construct a, a pair of training walls and if at all there is going to be any erosion here which we could we have to anticipate. I can have one or two uh, three or four transition grinds to take care of that. I already showed you some uh, uh, nice uh, pictures. Which is important in this kind of a situation where this river Kuam is running into a mega city thickly populated being blocked. You try to solve this problem or address this problem. I would address this problem first. So, when I address this problem, I would also consider this problem and take care of it. This is what to, to some extent what is meant by integrated coastal zone management. You just try to uh, integrate all the problems and try to manage the coast. It is a small example. Okay. Is that clear? So, was this done? Was this done? This Kuam problem. Well, I mean the solution. The solution to this was construction of a pair of training walls, but unfortunately, it was implemented, but unfortunately, it proved to be ineffective for the simple reason not because of the physics, because of technical problems, technical problems in the sense when you construct the grinds or the training walls, there are very important, there are certain important points you need to consider. So, what I will do is, I will consider this river Kuam problem after addressing the coastal erosion problem. 
I think that would be all right. What is this problem? Is it a natural problem or a man made problem? It is a man made problem because of the presence of the harbor breakwaters. You have a and now we are dealing with all these uh, problems, but here we are not directly involved, but I will give my comments in the next class probably. Okay. So, we will is that clear? Now, here this problem has become more severe. In fact, if you ask me personally, this problem is much more serious than this problem. Because there are so many people living along the banks of the river. Yeah, I will be talking about this tomorrow, okay. about this dredging point also I will be discussing. At that point of time, you ask. Okay, in the next that's on Monday, right? We'll discuss about that. Not that this problem cannot be solved. This problem can be easily solved, provided there is a, a detailed engineering study and implementation in full. I'll explain to that. Explain it later. Now, the negative problem is negative aspect is this erosion. The erosion has gone over a distance of about 12 kilometers, 9 to 12 kilometers, and we have lost nearly 500 meters or even slightly more of width of the beach. So many buildings have gone into the ocean along the coast because of this, in spite of several solutions that were being attempted. I will just show you some of the problems, some of the solutions attempted and the final solution which, uh, which has given a significant amount of relief. So, this problem has been in existence for nearly 5 decades. Now, we are in 2011. For the first, uh, for the last 5 decades, we had been experiencing this erosion problem. When you look at the rate of erosion along the Tamil Nadu coast, Tamil Nadu coast is this is the area somewhere here, this stretch of the coast about 900 kilometers, there is about a small stretch of the coast about 50 kilometers on the west coast also. This whole coast about 950 kilometers, they have carried a, is a vulnerable location for coastal erosion. So, Tamil Nadu coast has estimated that this area which we are discussing now, right now, that is this area, which is called as Rayapuram, they are estimated to be the highest with about 6.6 .6 meters per year getting eroded. In fact, that is on the lesser side, it is this is on an average 6.6 .6 meters. So, there are other locations where you have a, a, a deposit. So, the red line indicates it is erosion, and the other ones uh, uh, shows that it is deposition. So, I will just look at some of the other locations. Unfortunately, I have not given you the uh, uh, latitude and longitude, or I have presented any picture because I was not, I am not interested in showing you point by point. 
this slide is just to illustrate that the location which we are uh, discussing today is a location which is experiencing severe erosion. So, this is a typical view of the Marina beach which we had uh, uh, discussed this is a age old uh, picture, but it gives you the kind of beach and in fact uh, it is much more now uh, much more wider. What was the solution that was attempted for the protection measure for the Rayapuram beach? This had a, a core wall with 30 to 150 kgs uh, the weight of individual stones with an armor 1 is to 2 and the armor layer consisted of only 400 to 500 kg stones. So, by looking at the figure, if you later work out some of the examples, then you will understand, then you will be able to uh, uh, immediately say what kind of structure this is. Because when you calculate uh, using the size of the stone, so here you have the size of the stone. Please remember when we do the calculation of the weight of the stone for a particular wave height. So, how normally the weight of the stone is directly proportional to h cube. All of you know this, right? That is used by the, that is based on the Hudson's formula, which we will be seeing anyway. People who have not who, who have not heard about uh, Hudson's formula, don't worry. We will be having a, a lesson on that. But then. Once the weight is known, you can easily calculate the wave height. So now, if the wave height weight is 500 kg, then you can calculate what is the weight of what is the wave height that it can sustain. When you do that, the wave height will be around less than one meter, and very often the wave height will be exceeding one meter, right? So naturally, during a kind of a small monsoon. I mean a moderate monsoon itself the whole structure will collapse. So, this collapsed and I wanted to say that along the coast you know along the coast north of harbour there is a coastal highway and that coastal highway got collapsed as you can see here. So, for example, I will uh, this is a harbour, this is the river Kua okay, and this is the area which we are talking about eroding. This is the area so along this course there is a road there is a highway and this highway has collapsed because the erosion has penetrated even the highway. Initially there was a small road, but then there was a highway formed, but part of the highway also collapsed. What is this solution? Around the same time, there was a severe water problem for the city of Chennai, or that time it was called as city of Madras. And we had what is called as Viranam water supply scheme. Under this scheme, from the outskirts of the Chennai Viralam Lake, we wanted to get the Viralam Reservoir. We wanted to get the the idea was to transport the water through pipelines. Unfortunately, the this water supply scheme failed. 
for this purpose of this what for the purpose of this water supply scheme there were a lot of uh, concrete pipes precast pipes already ordered and it was lying all along this coast but when the water supply schemes failed all these pipelines were just uh, lying along the coast and uh, for some unknown unknown reasons it was decided that we they will use the pipes for the protection of the rayapuram coast you understood so what they did is they used a combination of tetrapods tetrapods are it has four legs i will show you the uh, model of uh, tetrapods when i take uh, about the when i take the lecture on breakwaters so right now you imagine that this is uh, this has uh, four legs so the tetrapods were put here and you see that this is only 8 meters and uh, the clear distance was maintained as 1 meter alternate scatter uh, uh, i mean uh, spacing it was spaced in an alternate fashion the pipes diameter was uh, 2 meters and uh, it, this was placed here and in section this is a concrete pipe wherein they filled with sand capped with the concrete and then erected it as shown here and in between they had put tetrapods plus they had gabions that is small size stones are being used so they had used gabions <laughs> all of you know what is the meant by gabion do you think that this is a good engineering solution you have to be bold when you are clear about uh, engineering you have to be clearly bold and say is it worth investigating or not it was already in installed as i told you any vertical obstruction is very dangerous and there was absolutely no toes cover given and this is the situation in a mid 90s when the problem of coastal erosion of this location was referred to us so all this most of these pictures were taken by us so you see that this is a closer view of the tetrapod and the concrete pipes the erosion before implementing some of the locations and look at the concrete pipes the erosion has gone behind the concrete pipes then uh, some of the concrete pipes due to scour has lost its stability and it is gone down plus you see the falling down of the and you see the extent of uh, erosion there is a guy who is standing here so that gives the depth of erosion taking place and this is again a closer view again all this survey all this photographs was physically done by the students of our department that is department of ocean engineering iit madras complete survey and we designed we came up with a solution so look look at some of the pipes okay what i will do here is we will continue the rest in the next class okay